Suppose the Lordship had an MLA who resigned to fight a new election and the Speaker, there may be bizarre cases, I don't know, Speaker said, no, I disqualify you. How long will it take a court to give a stay of that order, Malus? But here, Malus, none of these four or five possibilities is allowed to be tried because you apply, adopt a three-step procedure to annihilate the 10th schedule, which brings us to the harmonization principle. I'm not going to cite law, Malus, about harmonization from ordinary petty contracts to constitutional law. Your Lordship's first principle is harmonization from statutory delegated legislation up to the constitution. But I want to make the different point here that why did the 10th schedule come? Malus, we'll lead Mr. Ashok Sen's speech in Malus, the, when he piloted this 85 thing. The whole purpose is that you have come through a party seat. You go and face the electorate again, whether with that party, independent or a third party. That's the whole long and short of this Malus. Malus, have your Lordship ever heard this happening except in some very rare cases in England or other democracies. There is no concept, I have come on a party, I will either resign or I will just leave that and fight again for another party. That was the whole purpose of this. But what you are telling the court is that no, I will affirmatively not resign. I will not go to the EC. Why? Because I am scared that somebody will disqualify me. But then what was Mr. Ashokhsen enacting in 1985? Malus? It's enacting a power of disqualification for changing a party. What is the purpose of two-thirds of the parliament saying so if you can simply... What is the harmonization principle that you are referring yeah. to? Harmonization is this five, a four-fold, well, it's five originally with the faction, otherwise four, are the flexibility, play in the joints, affirmative, permissibility part of the 10th schedule. And the 21A, 21B is the negative, prohibitory part. You can do all these four without doing the negative part. For the negative, you don't have to well, violate the ne negative part. For any of these four, I will say even if you go to the election commission, you don't have to violate a whip. You don't have to well, voluntarily give up your party. You say, I am on principle, please decide this. So, in other words, you are saying other than those five instances, four now. Every, four, everything else is, everything else falls within the net of 10th schedule. And one more thing I am saying, that 10th yeah. schedule, absolutely correct. And the 10th schedule has both parts. It has those four, it has a negative. It well as creates a whole code by itself. Harmonization means that your Lordship will adopt my submission and inter interpretation because it harmonizes the negative and the positive. Now for 30 seconds, see if your Lordship does not adopt the harmonization principle. The only thing a Lordship will have to validate is a three-step procedure. There's nothing else for this. It's staring a Lordship in the face. The three-step procedure, I want to ask myself, Malus, in which case will the 10th schedule bite? Let's Malus, be very blunt. What your Lordship will do is your Lordship's domain. But today, your Lordship's other option, other than my option, which I am submitting most humbly and respectfully is, adopt the three-step procedure or validate it or recognize it. Malus, then how will 10th schedule apply? It cannot. And then, Malus, your Lordship should be actually adopting an interpretation which reduces the 10th schedule to vanishing point. Actually, vanishes, then vanishing point, it vanishes. Every case of defection, I will say, I will not resign. I won't go to the EC. I won't merge. Merger is given to you by the para 4 of the 10th of the, of the schedule. I will not do it. But as your Lordships was told, I am the party. I am the overwhelming majority. I am the main person. I am it. I am it. Therefore, to hell with the 10th schedule. So, well as on principles of interpretation and much more so of constitutional interpretation than even statutory. This is a much better way to look at it than well as the contrary view. Because your Lordship well gives meaning to both sides and your Lordship does not adopt something. What is this other adoption which is pro propounded to your Lordships? On the high moral principle of democracy, dissent, free speech. Each of my four options gives you that option. So what the 10th schedule does is, it says, I am giving you a free speech option. I am giving you a democracy option, but within my own terms. I am not giving you a Jangal Raj free speech and democracy option. Otherwise, why would I enact a 10th schedule? See, but merger, Dr. Singh was not an option open to them because they were not claiming to merge their party with yeah, either the BJP or any other party. With respect, well, I'm sorry, right. Dr. why not? So, merger was not an option. No, it was an option. No. They did not choose course, to exercise that's it. Correct, right. Yeah, that's correct. It's an option. They chose not they to exercise an option. In, an, in the abstract, but they were not following the merger route at all because it's not their case that, look, this part of the Sena that's exactly has my point with another party. That is not That's clear. exactly my point with greatest humility. Then the only point is that in a situation like this, where they say that we have lost faith with the leader of the party, yes. then the only con then the only option according to them, according to you, is that you resign and recontest. No, no, no. I will stick stick to my four options. That's huh? I'll say all the four options are no, 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 no. 
No, no. What, what, what do they do then? No, no. Whereas resign is one. Right. These nine people with merge with another political party, why not? But the fact that I don't exercise an option. That, that is not an option because merger means that their political identity as the Shiv Sena is lost there. But, that, that, but then in that case, if the 10th schedule says that I recognize only this path of exit of, from this room, you can't say I'll make a new tunnel to get out. But you know, Dr. Singh, this can't make part a of your argument is a problematic argument. A that look, problemat. I'll tell you why. Because your argument postulates that if you have a dissension, then the only way you can express the dissension is to leave the party and merge somewhere else. One? They say, sorry, we don't want to leave. I mean, right. ideologically, I am a Shiv Sena man. Shiv I don't want to leave, he says. He says, I don't want to leave the party. So, as per kindly see, argument, no, kindly see the even if, even if somebody applies to the election commission at yes. the initial stage instead yes. of in the legislative assembly Correct. and says that we now want the political party to and that we are the political party, and recognize us. So even that, according to your argument, is impermissible then? No, no. Because? So because that's outside the so long five as five instances that no, you have no, given. No, no, no. One of my five is easy. He's not resigned. I beg No, no. One is resignation. One is split, which is gone now. One is merger. The fourth is EC. Fourth is EC. Now, whereas if I apply to EC without violating a whip and get a decision, if I apply to EC without voluntarily resigning, it's perfectly permissible. I can't be saying I'll topple first and then I'll apply to EC. So remain a member, be a part of it, and, and contemporaneously vindicate your principle. Absolutely. But as I just see the reverse of it, but just, just consider how it will apply. You first topple the government, then you go to the EC. And why did you write the tenth schedule? That we understand. No, and, and Malas, also apropos by Lord Chief Justice Query, Malas, are you harmonizing or not? There is one more thing. The fact that you don't choose consciously not to excise an option but does not mean you can wish away the option. The option is a constitutional option. It's a constitutional option. It's as equal to split as it was earlier. You don't exercise it. It really amounts to saying this. I want to avoid the 10th schedule. So I will put blinkers and close my eyes to four options available. Four constitutional options. The fifth one is deleted. And I will choose a new option which is only the three-step procedure. First, Disable the speaker, second approach the governor, third be sworn in. See, the negative prohibition in the 10th schedule is twofold. One, voluntarily giving up a membership, and two, defying a whip to 1A to 1B. The 10th schedule certainly does not have any provision by virtue of which there is a prescription if you do not give voluntarily, if you do not give up the membership of the party and yet exercise the right of working your remedies within the party. It, 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 then you cannot be held to be a defector. Right. And that is the whole purpose. You were elected. That's exactly the case. No, No, but well, then in that case, why do you enact the 10th schedule? Well, 10th schedule is not well, saying that well, Article 19.1a, just see 194, well, it's a very interesting article. Let me put this harmonization, which is a very important principle, in another way. What is the scheme of whole, this entire system? Well, if your lordship were to make a standard as broad as if you have a dissent, you can violate the 10th schedule. Then a lot should be uh, unmanageable. Then, but unmanageable. your argument, Dr. Singhvi, would be yes. the extreme argument on this side, which possibly you can adopt also, is that any dissension amounts to the voluntary voluntary giving up of the membership of a no, party. I'm going to give one of the more. I, I'm not an extreme. The other argument is extreme. I'm going to give a harmonized answer immediately to that. The principle can never be Malas dissent. I'm not happy. Therefore, I can go. Three answers, Malas. One. Well, everybody has dissent, Malas. Which political party? There are enough inbuilt outlets within the party to express dissent. One, that is what your lordship will always say. Two, the dissent within the party at the appropriate fora can be followed by any of these four. Three, three, you Malas, if you are having dissensions and you are not satisfied with the party system, then Malas, you will simply express it that I am resigning or doing Malas, going away with nine tenths of the people. But Malas, how will you say that mere disagreement entitles me to topple? Here they have not expressed dissent. Malas, it's not a case of dissent. I have not gone out and spoken against the party. Dissent plus. This is dissent plus plus plus. Dissent plus toppling. You will also remember that I started Malas, I think there was a Navabravia hearing. You also notice Malas, uh, 191, 2 and 194. You may not remember that. We'll just kindly turn to that for a minute. 191 bracket 2 is an clear statutory uh, the constitutional prohibition in the 10th schedule saying you shall be disqualified that's the 10th schedule comes from 191 bracket 2 
Now, when it's 194, which follows two clauses later, says, subject to the provisions of this constitution, there shall be freedom of speech in the legislature. And whereas 191A is even more reasonable restrictions. Now, it can't be that mere saying free speech, I can violate, I, I'll violate, you can act within the party constitution. What is the party constitution allows? Some party constitutions have Malus, even appellate bodies, some have two level things. You can actually do all of it. Before you go by these four escape routes of merger, resignation, you can do all of it. But ultimately, if it doesn't work, you have to take these four routes. And 194 1 makes it clear subject to the provision of this constitution and to the rules and standing orders regulating the procedure, there shall be freedom of speech in the legislature of every state. This is not much as an open ended charter. And Manus, plus, she kindly see the consequences. Dr. Singh, according to you, when does the governor then award, uh, order a trust vote? No, the, gov Manus, the governor has no role at all in such a situation. Governor's first answer to Lord Shubhi is when the government is formed or when the government is about to be formed. That's the inception argument. The governor will never come into a 10 schedule situation. It's a Manus, what is the Lordship considering? An intra party dispute. At the end of the day, what is this dissension? I don't like you. I think you intra party. How does it come to intra party dispute? How does it even recognize it? There are all kinds of feuds going inside parties. How does my lord lay down in English language a judicially manageable standard to control the governor peeking into intra party disputes? For us? It will be a thin end of the wedge. This is nothing but political party A intra. The governor will deal with some constitutional issue or something relating beyond intra-party. And how will the governor deal without any specific article, mind you, in a sense, superseding and overdoing the 10th schedule, which is a constitutional article, with 191.2, which we tend to forget. 191.2 read with the 10th schedule. Step one was, uh, as we saw, I mean, the three the three, uh, the three steps that you told us. Just yes, for a second, I'll just go, down, go back to it. Correct. Please. Notice of removal to the speaker. Yes. Resolutions given to the governor and yes. the act of being sworn in as a CM. Correct. There's one step earlier, probably one one step which you can also add there, which was the governor's trust I'm vote communication. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Right. Now, Four step the, suppose, suppo uh, you know, notice of removal of the speaker, we are not really called upon to adjudicate upon the validity of the... Except, except in Navam Arabia. Your Lordship, if your Lordship chooses to refer, would have that issue. Navam Rebia, if we choose. In the broad, no, no, I'm saying it arises. I'm not saying your Lordship may have to for this case. I'm saying that's the core issue. In, no, no, I'm saying, well, it's, it's an issue. The governor, the governor asked for a trust vote. Yes. Two ways of looking at it. Well, the governor had material to call for a trust vote, in which case a further issue would arise as to whether he was justified in calling upon Shinde to form the government. Pinpointing, picking out a person and saying. Picking out a person because Correct. even assuming that the governor had material to call for a trust vote, what is the basis for picking up Shinde? Second, that the governor had no material to ask for a trust vote. That there was no valid material at all That's on the basis question. of those three circumstances. That's a core question. And well, it's, that goes to the heart of the matter. Well, if I may digress for 30 seconds, Mr. Dushar Mehta was right when he quoted the couplet. But perhaps didn't realize that the second sentence applies against him. He quoted Bashir Bhadra to say, Chup rahe to galat fehmiyo aur dalat fehmiya aur bhi badhi. Usne wo bhi suna jo mehne kaha nahi. Usne wo bhi suna jo mehne kaha nahi. Well, the governor in his letter at 326 PDF talks of a resolution to exit the government which doesn't exist at page 55 of the resolution itself there. So, he's yeah, hearing things. Yeah, yeah, the resolution doesn't say that we are exiting the government. Yes. So, he heard something. We had said, wanted to. <laughs> well, I found a more appropriate one for Mr. Mehta. I found a more appropriate phase for Mr. Mehta. Was. Not Bashir. Bhatt. So, the only question was whether there was a valid exercise of power by the governor to call for a trust vote. And if we, but what happens if we come to the conclusion that there was no valid exercise of power by the governor to call a trust? Everything falls. Everything falls is very. Uh, no, no. Why? I'll, I'll be dealing with Bhagwan. That's actually that's a core question. Your lordships is saved a lot of unnecessary exercise if your lordship comes to that conclusion plus follows Bomai, which in any case is. So then you, according to you, what we reinstate uh, the Uddhav Thakre. Straight away, let me just change my tack. So <laughs> let me end this first point by saying. Let me end the first point by asking myself a reverse question. What happens in my first point of uh, affirmative and negative if your lordships were to accept their interpretation? That's a good way of answering my malus proposition. Namely, your lordship will have nothing left in the 10th schedule. How does the lordship operate both? The four step or the three step becomes the norm. 
and will be followed in every case to defeat the 10th schedule. That's my first point.